Hello, and welcome to LEGO Mindstorm's EV3 Basics, Flow Block Basics. Now with the orange flow blocks, they're rather unique characters with some attributes that can provide bigger impact on your program. So we'll be discussing the similarities and differences of them, as well as do some programming along the way. So please, follow along. So let's talk about the orange flow blocks. To begin with, they are basically useless without another block. But what they do offer is greater program functionality by influencing the flow of a program. So let's take a closer look. So the start block you're already familiar with. As you know, it loads with every new program. The wait block, the loop block, and the switch block are the three that we'll be focusing on today. The loop interrupt block does exactly that but we won't be discussing that. So let's start with the weight block and drag it up onto our canvas. Again, the common fields in a block are the mode and the input value. But what's noticeably missing is the port selection field. So let's change the mode for just a minute with one of the selections we'll be needing to use in our exercises. Notice that the port selection has been made available and that the default is port three. There again, got to harp on this. Always, always make sure your port selection fields match the physical counterpart on your brick. And just as a quick tip for the exercises later, here's the other sensor we'll be using, ultrasonic sensor, compare distance to centimeter. There again, got a change in port selection and the input values changed as well. So I'll go ahead and change this back to the default setting of time. Now by itself, this block will do absolutely nothing. As I said earlier, it needs another block. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this out of the way just for a minute. And from off screen, I'm gonna drag in a steering block and try something we haven't seen yet, the setting of on. But with the other settings, such as on for seconds, on for degrees, or the default, the duration of runtime is set by rotations in this case. For degrees, same thing basically, rotations, 360 degrees, time, for one second, but when you set it for on, by itself, it has no idea how long it's supposed to run. And that's where the weight block comes in. So I could either have it run for one second, for 10 seconds, or I could have it run until it sees a color. In this case, it's red, or I could change it to a different color, like white. So now I'd like to have a little bit of a group discussion regarding the common thread to all these blocks, these three blocks, and that is their mode. Now, specifically about the mode is that the mode actually sets a condition. Now, if you remember when we talked about the weight block, and we had it with the steering block. The steering block was set to on, and that ran, as we set it with the weight block, it would either run for one second or 10 seconds, or we also set it to run with the color sensor, remember, to see red, or then we change it to see white, okay? So what that's saying is that the block, the steering block, talking with the steering block, it is running until a condition is met. And that condition was white, which was set on the weight block, but affected the steering block. So back to the mode being the common thread for these three blocks. Let's take a look at that. With the weight block, we've seen most of them, or at least the two important ones, <laughs> color sensor and ultrasonic sensor. 
Those are the two we'll be focusing on today. And it just so happens with the loop block, the mode, it also has a color sensor, an ultrasonic sensor. And the switch block, mode, color sensor, and ultrasonic sensor. Basically, it sensors throughout with each one of the modes. And they all have their default, the weight block being time, the loop block being unlimited, and the switch block being a touch sensor. So now let's talk a little about the loop block specifically. For the sake of discussion, I'm going to throw a couple of string blocks in. Notice how the loop block opens up to accommodate the space needed. OK, so now we have a couple of string blocks in here. And the way they're set right now, on for rotations, that one's going to run once. This one's on for rotation is going to run once at a power of 50 each. Uh, let's go ahead and just for the sake of things, tone this down to 30. So we've made a 30. But what's really happening here? You have one block running one rotation, another block running a rotation. They're both going straight. So it's going to run one rotation, have a little hiccup, a little bit of a stop. Going to run another rotation stop and then it's set to infinite or unlimited excuse me and that's going to run back around and start over again so that's what the loop block does it runs through its programming and when it gets here it starts over again unless a condition is met in this case it's set to unlimited so the only way this is going to stop is if we stop the program ourselves or the batteries run out so if we didn't want this to run forever and ever and ever, we would have to change the mode. Using our color selection, color sensor, color, and then change this to white, just because what would happen here is it would run, 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 and then all of a sudden your ultrasonic sensor, excuse me, your color sensor, see something white, like a white line. That would stop this loop. And so what that is, that is considered a loop exit condition. Because afterwards, you could have it go on to do other things. So basically, you would be running inside this loop up until it came across a white line. As soon as it came across the white line, that white line would be the loop exit condition. It would then stop the loop and move on to the next block. In this case, we have a move steering block that's going to spin. But you get the idea. So now we're on to the switch block. Let's go ahead and change our mode, our condition, to color sensor, compare, color. And yep, we're going white. Now you can and should use any color that works for you. The only reason I'm using white is because with the upcoming exercises, my robot is running on a dark table using white electrician's tape. So for you, pick whatever color that is suitable. So what this is saying is that with the color white here, is that whatever you want to happen, if your color sensor sees white, it will be a true statement. It should do this. If it does not see white, it will be a false statement and should do this. So let's throw something in there. So let's get back to our trusty steering blocks. So 
So basically what we have here, if your color sensor sees white, you have a block that's going to go straight for one rotation. If it does not see white, it's going to go straight for one rotation. Now, not much difference there, is it? So let's make some changes. Let's make this one. It's going to turn right a little bit. And this one, negative 20. And the steering, it's going to turn left a little bit. And let's change our power settings, our speed. We're going to slow our robots down just a little bit. Now we have some differences. If it sees white, it's going to go right a little bit for one rotation. If it does not see white, it's going to go left a little bit for one rotation. So if you ran this program right now and your robot was not sitting over the color that you have selected, it would then not see that color. It would turn left for one rotation. Now, if you placed your robot on the color that it's supposed to see, if you had red here or black or some other different color, if that would be a positive, it would, it would say, yes, true, I see that color, it would turn right. But the thing is that you'd have to run the program every time. So you'd run it once to test it without the color, run it once to test it with the color to get your variables here. And the reason why you'd have to run it once each time is by how the flow is with this block. So each time it looks, do I see the color or not? If it does see the color, it goes up, turns right just a little bit, and then goes on out. Done. Same thing, run it again. Oh, I don't see the color this time. Comes down to the false, turns left a little bit for one rotation, and then on out. Make sense? So each time this program runs, it just runs once. How do you suppose we can make it run multiple times or continuously? If your answer was to put the switch block within a loop block, you are correct. That is exactly what we would do to get this to run in a continuous fashion. So what would be the flow here is that you start the program, it looks for the color, if it sees the color, it turns right a little bit. Then on out. Oh, you're in a loop. So you're going to go back around and do it again. Oh, I didn't see the color this time. So I'm going to turn left a little bit. And then it's going to go out and be in the loop again. Now, what do you suppose is actually happening in detail? What's happening is that each time it sees or doesn't see, it's still moving just one rotation. So a way to get the color sensor to search constantly rather than after each wheel rotation, again, the way it's set now, if it sees the color, it's gonna go one wheel rotation, then go back around. If it doesn't see the color, it'll go one wheel rotation and then go back around. So a way to get it to, to get the color sensor to search constantly is to set the mode on the steering blocks to on. So what that does with the move steering blocks, with them being set to on, is that it happens so fast that it goes around. Effectively, your color sensor is in a constant state of searching rather than waiting for the wheel rotation each time. It's in a constant state of searching. And the obvious benefit is that everything happens much more quickly. Now with our loop set the way it is, everything's going to happen quick, but it's also going to happen forever. You might want to change that. So let's go ahead and go down to ultrasonic sensor, distance in centimeters. And let's change that to less than or equal to with a distance of, uh, let's say, 10 centimeters. So what that's saying is that all this right and left turning, depending on whether or not 
your color sensor sees a white line or whatever, it's going to run indefinitely. It's going to run in a loop until it comes within five centimeters, or excuse me, within 10 centimeters of an object that's detected by the ultrasonic sensor. Once that happens, you would have the loop exit condition in which you could exit the loop and go on to something else, like have your robot do a spin.